Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity to visit this nice place and to give a talk. Uh, yes, oh, sorry. <laughs> So my talk is based on the problem. <laughs> I'm not good at anything. <laughs> so, okay. uh, based on the collaboration with Takashi Mamura and uh, Matteo Mucciconi. And uh, basically the contents of, of my talk today uh, with the, have already appeared in these two papers. So if you have interest, please take a look at them. Yeah, originally I was hoping to finish one project related to this and I talk about that, but uh, it has not been completely finished. So today let me kind of basic version of the story. So yeah, some of you maybe have heard a similar uh, talk already, but uh, I think uh, still pretty many people have not heard about this. So, and I still think that this is a nice kind of development in the KPZ. So let me talk about At, at least, uh, yeah, I think I haven't explained this to Jeremy. So let me take this opportunity to explain it to Jeremy. Yeah, so, uh, I was also a bit wondering when I met the uh, me for the first time, so maybe at MSRI again, 2010, or, I don't know, maybe, yeah, okay. But what I remember more is the uh, Opel Rolfa. So, which way I don't quite remember, but, but uh, maybe on the way back, back to the home countries, we shared the taxi, I think. <laughs> and then he already asked me about this, uh, what, what Patrick was explaining. So, so, so I, in 2005 and six and so on. So I was uh, with, yeah, with, with Patrick and Alexei and uh, Michael, we studied basically the alternate initial condition, particular fixed initial co configuration, but the fo original formulas can be used for gener generic initial configuration of particles. So and, uh, I think if I remember where well, the question was, how much we can try to, to study the generic initial condition. And this is exactly related to this uh, KPZ fixed point, right? Yeah, but yeah, in that sense, I think this was 2011 or so, so it took like uh, five, six years to finish it. But uh, yeah, I think it was very nice. Yeah, uh, Jeremy and some, some collaborators could, could really finish. Maybe I, I yeah, I, I was also in a good position to do this, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but at that time, I was more interested in why the KPD equation and some discrete model can be solved. And uh, this is still related to this question. Okay. So the plan of the talk is like this. So yeah, so this is this stuff almost everybody should know, but uh, let, let me start from the kind of, uh, kind of original story of the relation between yeah, KPZ models and the uh, <coughs> integrable systems. So the asset, a sure measure, and the field fermions. I use the terminology of field fermions. So they are more related to determine at the point process, but uh, I use a little more physical terminology, please allow me. And so then I mentioned this uh, kind of exact solution for the KPD equation and the appearance of KPD and uh, determinant and uh, some uh, indication that uh, this may be related to free fermion at the final temperature. So then I mentioned a little bit about the relation between discrete KPD models and QHT measure. So, so these black parts uh, have been known already for more than 10 years, right? But then so these, the, the things below are uh, related to my more recent work. So first I explained the relation between the q measure related to KPZ model and uh, some equalization of the shear measure for the periodic shear measure. And this is related to free fermion at positive temperature. So at this point you see some connection between KPZ models and the free fermion at positive temperature. So this is a kind of generalization of this uh, free fermion at final temperature for the KPZ equation, right? And uh, so then to establish this, we kind of introduce what we call the skew RSK dynamics. It's uh, one generalization of the original RSK, which was used, used to study TASF. And then I mentioned a little bit about the applications to take this model, in particular TASF case. Okay, but uh, for those who are not so familiar with this terminology of free fermion, let me use just one slide. For, for those, you know, this is just 
stupid trivia remark, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> so free theorem is, uh, yeah, so th th this is not really precise, right? This is kind of just a, uh, just a few words, but uh, a free theorem is a clone of many particles, possibly infinite particle system, so which so we suppose we have some quantum Hamiltonian that you diagonalize it, then you have some eigenstate or eigenfunction. And the, the eigenfunction is denoted by phi n here, and x is some space position. And uh, so the eigenstates are labeled by some integer number n, small n, and uh, each state is associated with some energy, so the eigenvalue of the quantum Hamiltonian. Right? And then for the case of fermions, so each level, it can be either occupied occupied by some particle or empty. So this is the function. Please also the case of the many particle systems can be just specified by which levels are occupied, right? So this is free fermion. For, for the case, I think capital T is always meaning some temperature. When uh, T is equal to zero, so this is the zero temperature case. So then, <coughs> When we are considering n particle systems, uh, when temperature is small, so the lowest energy state is realized. So in, for the case of free fermion, it means that uh, we should fill the first n levels right, from the ground state energy. So then, uh, by using this uh, eigenfunction, um, we want n, n, the wave function is, is given by a determinant. Free fermion has anti symmetric property for the eigenfunction, so we use the determinant, which is much later determinant in physics. And then the probability density, which is more close to probability theory, uh, so PDF of the particle positions of any particle is given by basically a square of this wave function, and that is just a normalization constant, right? And uh, it, as you see, this is very similar to the eigenvalue densities of GUE. And in fact, the GUE can be considered as uh, very much related to the ground state of the free fermion in harmonic potential. So some of you should, should know that. Yeah. Well, uh, point. Then once you have this kind of nectar, which is written in the product of the determinant, then uh, all the correlations of the particle position and also gap distribution, you know, the part there are no particles within this region or something, then they are all written in, uh, in the form of determinants. For the correlation, we use, uh, you know, usual n by n determinants, and for gap distribution, we use random determinants. Anyway, so they are all written in terms of determinants with always the same corner. And uh, this is written in terms of this uh, eigenfunction, right? And uh, yeah, of course, uh, for those you know who knows about the GUE, so this is the usual GUE con. GUE con is also written this way, in this form. Okay, but uh, the finite temperature case may not be so familiar to some of you, but one can think of the situation where we consider finite temperature. So in this case, the each state is filled with certain probability, so given by this function. Where beta is one of what, what we call the inverse temperature. So this is maybe it's just a, some positive constant, Boltzmann constant. But basically, this is one over capital T. T is uh, again the temperature, which is positive. Anyway, so, so yeah, I'm not saying why, but uh, yeah, this is a well known fact that uh, for pre fermion at finite temperature, each state is filled with this probability. And this is called Fermi Dirac factor. And then one can also consider correlations and gap probabilities, and they are all again between in the form of determinants. And now the kernel is replaced by this infinite sum, right, Swiss. And if you consider the zero temperature limit uh, with appropriately chosen mu, then this reduces to the n particle set here, right? So this is a, uh, the basic thing about the free fermion at zero temperature and the finite temperature. And uh, maybe the terminology, you, you may be more familiar with the determinant point process, so yeah, they are very much related. And uh, yeah, the fact that all correlations and these kind of gap distributions are written in terms of determinants, this is basically the pro uh, properties of determinant point process, right? But uh, in the determinant point process, probably we don't usually make so uh, distinction between zero temperature case and finite temperature case, but uh, somehow uh, this distinction is a bit important in my story. So 
But let me use this terminology. Previously, I'm beyond zero temperature and then finite temperature. Okay, so let's start from the, the well known case of part step. So, part step is this. And uh, so, this, so, this part is based on the framework work by Kurt. So, let me use the kind of discrete time version in which particles hop only to the right with probability one minus r. This is not weight, right? Con not continuous time, and uh, this is discrete time. Then we are interested in integrated current of certain bonds between zero and one, so basically the origin up to time t. And uh, so kind of simplest case to start from the step initial condition and the current possibility to height with the KPC picture. Okay, so this is the, uh, about the work of Kurt 25 years ago. So instead of considering task set itself, one can also consider some uh, last pass set calculation, right? By considering how many time steps each particle waits before making a, make a, make a jump. So then, so we have some independent random variables on, on quadrant. Then we can consider some pass and we can define right? uh, polymer energy. And, but they, yeah. So then the statistics of the current is equivalent to the statistics of this uh, zero temperature polymer energy. Here, this uh, have to make previous shift, but uh, this is kind of conceptually, conceptually equal. So statistics of NT is not as equivalent to statistics of G, this uh, energy here. Here. In, general, in the original task, if we are considering the hopping probability of one minus R, but we can generalize the situation uh, such that uh, we have two sets of parameters, AI and PJ. So maybe the parameter at IJ is a uh, AI times VJ, right? Okay, so then the, what was important, I think, is to use the, what is called the RSK, Robinson chain to produce correspondence and also algorithm uh, to, to map the problem to another combinatorial problem. So now, so this is represented by W. So for now we are, we have when we consider the current at the origin of n particles, we are considering n by n matrix of non-negative integer entries. Then so this RSK says that there's a bijection between such kind of integer matrix and a pair of semi-standard young tableau of the same, same shape, which is not written here. And by using that, so yeah, here I mean, don't do not really explain. How this? So I, I hope most of you know. But anyways, by using this projection, one can prove that uh, so this sum of a partition is equal to this simple product, right? And uh, yeah, this is kind of bijective proof of that. By using this RSK, we can get bijective proof of this, of this what is Cauchy identity for the Schuer function. A Schuer function can be defined as a sum. There's a combinatorial formula for Schuer function, which is written here. So there's a sum of semi-standard young tableau. So by using this projection, so this function appears on, yeah, on the left hand side. Okay. So then, yeah, so this is this formula can be found when we sorry, when we take the whole sum of all possibilities. But because this is projection, maybe we can put some conditions. And in fact, so this GN is in this mapping of RSK, GN turns out to be equal to the length of the first row in the Young diagram. So we may put some con conditioning on this GN like this. Then this can be still written as a partial sum of uh, partitions with this conditioning of lambda one should be less than or equal to U. Oh. Then uh, for sure function, there's another formula for the Jacobi Trudy formula, which uh, expresses sure Function as a single determinant. Then, so this is a determinant, and this is also determinant. Now we see the product of determinant structure, which is appears in the screen, uh, in the first slide, not where I, in the free fermion, right? So at this point, the task step is more or less mapped to the free fermion, right? So then we can use the whole machine as determinant point process, then everything is can be written as determinant, and so on. And uh, one particular important result at that time was that the current distribution tends to the trace with them, GUE trace with them distribution, and uh, which is written in the form of the federal determinant with this kind of something 
you, you, most of you know well. Okay. Then the um, result for a KPZ equation, which appears in so many places in this conference. And uh, yeah, so this is this is related to directed polymer time and temperature. But anyway, so uh, the, the result which was obtained in 2010 by a few groups was that there is a nice formula, explicit formula, determinant formula again, if we consider a particular expectation value given here. So we start from, so this is called, corresponding to the second initial condition, we consider uh, this delta initial condition for polymer partition function. Then for this initial condition, there is a for determinant, determinant of formula like this. This was a really tough time. Yeah, so usually I put D at the beginning, but today <laughs> I decided to change the order. This is alphabetical order. Anyway, so then at the time, the, the kernel, which we found uh, was this one. Original expression was a little bit different, but uh, this can, this, uh, the equivalent formula is written this way, where the kernel is given this. So then, yeah, now you notice that there's a, this is very much similar to the GUE kernel, but the only difference is that now we have this factor, which is nothing but a Fermi Dirac factor. So then there should be some connection between the KP's equation and the free Fermi at finite temperature. So this was kind of question, this was for me for a long time. So yes, as some, some of you know, so this formula itself can be found by taking the limit of ASA, but with replica calibrations like here. But uh, usually people use uh, beta and do some, uh, use some generative function. And then they will notice that uh, there's some freedom determinant, and this can be written this way, right? But I wanted to understand this formula in a more conceptual way. Right? So now we see some connection between some model and some free fermion. Then the determinant should be obvious. This is this is what I wanted to achieve at the time. But uh, this took pretty long time. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, but uh, after this KP equation, there are many uh, developments, as you know. And uh, for example, there are many discrete KPZ models introduced and studies. ACFO has been known for a long time, but uh, there appears the new models like QTACF, stochastic higher spin six vertex model. There are many models. But uh, still, one important observation of Alex and Ivan was that uh, so these models are most of them are related to the Q-Hoitaka function or Q-Hoitaka measure. The passive was related to sure function, sure measure, but these models are not simply written uh, in terms of sure measure, but they are related, related to Q-Hoitaka function. So by using the, the some properties of Q-Hoitaka function, one can study KPZ models, and this was quite successful. But still, the connection to the KPM was not so clear, at least in my opinion. <laughs> and one particular case, which is related to my, my talk today, is a model called Q-push tasted, in which uh, one sees the real connection to the kind of simplest case of the q measure. But uh, in, this, in my talk, yeah, the model itself is not so important. Yeah, let me mention this. And uh, any particle position at the time n, of this particular model is related to again the first so it's a Q-Hitaka measure. So once we can, uh, at this point, uh, the point is that once we can study the Q-Hitaka measure, the, the, the statistic, statistics of the length of the first row of the Q-Hitaka measure, then this gives you the, the statistics for KPZ models. But the main difference from the case of Shura, what has it, was that. Uh, Unfortunately, for Q-Hitaka function, there's no single determinant formula. For the case of Shua, I mentioned that there's a formula called Jacobi Trudy. And then the measure is already almost like the free fermion. But for this case, because there's no, no formula, single determinant formula, the Q-Hitaka measure, the connection free fermion is clear. Okay, then now let me somehow introduce another generalization of the shear sure measure for the periodic shear sure measure. First introduced by Alexei, and then studied in the context of free fair by beta and beta. So this is the measure. So instead of the usual shear sure function, we now consider skew shear sure function, but again, still this is the uh, product of two shear sure function. And then now we put this extra factor, and then we 
And so when we are considering the measure on lambda, we should take a sum of a row, right? This is not, the it measure itself is not very really determinant or critical, you know? but uh, one can make a simple change, modification. So if we consider some independent lambda variable capital S distributed according to this, then if you add this to lambda i, then this measure becomes determinant and related to free fermi at the final temperature. So then, uh, now this is the free fermi at the final temperature, determined at the point process. So for example, the distribution of this lambda one is can be written as single determinant, right? Then what we could find to prove was that uh, in fact, <coughs> Some this particular expectation value related to few hectic measure. So this expectation related to mu one distributed according to few hectic measure is equal to the probability that the lambda one plus s is less than or equal to m for the period of measure. And the, the right one is the probability which are exactly the same. So here I mentioned that uh, this may be written as determinant, determinant single de trade off determinant because this is a free frame at final temperature. So by combining these equality and the, the, the equality in the previous slide, then this quantity for the measure of KPZ model is written as determinant, right? This is the basic idea. <laughs> but uh, how do we, we, we could just compare some formula and see that the is the same. But uh, the point in, in our recent work is to find some more objective, what kind of detailed understanding of the quality. So if we write down this expectation and the probability in terms of the functions, theoretical function and the spatial function, this identity can be written this way. So we wanted to understand this identity in a bijective manner, right? So the original work of Johansson was to use as a bijection between tacit configurations and to the statistics of uh, <coughs> Young tableau and so on, and uh, this is something I wanted to achieve for this case. <coughs> and uh, indeed, we could find it. <coughs> okay, so yeah, this is uh, sorry, this is the identity we wanted. Sorry, no. <laughs> and uh, so right, right, right hand side maybe a bit. Oh, sorry, this is not working now. Is there some pointer? Maybe some speak or no? Maybe my mistake. It's working. Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. So at the beginning, we are not sure about the combinatorial understanding of this object. So, but uh, for this part, this is sure function, a skew sure function for which the combinatorial formula. Is well known. So we start. We started from the right, right hand side. Okay. So so this is a formula. Future. This is more or less the same as the combinatorial formula for the usual shear function. But now we have to consider skewed the other So then, uh, yeah. we wanted to start from a pair of skewed tableau like this. Then do some operation to them and try to find some combinatorial objects related to Q-Hoytaka images or functions. Right? This is the way. So start from, let's use some example. Okay, so, so let's start from this particular example of the skew tableau. Right? First, we do something rather simple. We try to kind of squeeze this uh, tableau in the same amount, such that uh, they are still uh, a pair of skew tableau. So in this case, even if we shift these two first rows by one, they are still skewed, skewed, have no pair of skewed have no. And if you do one more, they are not. So then we see in general, we get some uh, some partition, which, which we call new. So then we do uh, you use some kind of generalization of the RSK, which was basically introduced by Saga and Sunday a long time ago. So in the our usual RSK, we use insertion and the bump, right? And uh, but we, we also do the same. But for this case, it's a different insertion, but internal insertion. So for a given skew tableau, we pick up some corner like this. So then we 
to the bumping to this particular thing, right? So then this two is bumps for the next, then do the bump three and so on. Then we get uh, this this skew tableau. For so this and uh, but we want to do something for the pair. And uh, let, let's consider our current example. The right hand side is exactly the same. So we do this interaction. On the left hand side, uh, we no no sorry. No, no, so the, the left hand side is the same. So exactly this. For the right hand side, we do we kind of up to you know if add one if we add one to all f then we put a kind of new spin here. Uh, maybe sorry, don't put it clear. E decreased by one. So three becomes two, two becomes one, and we put five. In this way, this is a map from a pair of skew tableau to another set of another pair of tableau. And then yeah, we can repeat this many, many times. And this we call skew RST map. And we can still repeat this skew RST map many, many times. Then we see something a bit interesting. So for our current examples, if we apply this skew RST time evolution 10 times, then the situation will look like this. They are still a pair of skewed tableau, but they, they show some particular behavior. So now, basically, all columns become independent, and they propagate with definite speed. So for the first, for the first column, so there are three non-empty number, so they propagate with speed three, right? For the for the two columns, they have two, two non, non, non non entries, so they propagate with the speed and so on. And this behavior, uh, uh, for those who know box and both system, this behavior is quite very, very similar to them, right? And uh, in, in a sense, they show very, very uh, behavior which are very much similar to solidness so in discrete space, space time. And then, <coughs> Anyway, so if we forget about the empty places, we can consider some kind of, create some kind of tableau like this. They are increasing in each column, but there are no conditions for the, among the columns. And so this we call the vertical strict tableau, VFT. So now after applying this QRSP dynamics, we get a pair of VST. And, we also, and so the shape is denoted by the mu. So then uh, the question of whether there's some, so this object VST is related to q Hoytaka function. So we notice that, that there's such a formula exactly, which is written here. So we, with a certain weight q to the power h, then if you take a sum of a VST, this gives you exactly the q, q Hoytaka function, right? And the hv is known as the energy function in critical theory, and uh, this measures kind of some kind of distance of VST, you can do VST and the same standard law. Okay, so then, then basically, so we have, we started from a pair of combinatorial objects related to this, and we could already arrive at some combinatorial objects here, right? The remaining is to see how to this P new and the H appear. And uh, I think I don't have enough time, but yeah. Anyway, so the point was that we could find the bijection between these objects, right? We start from a pair of skew tableau, and then we, we arrive at a pair of this VST and this uh, uh, partition coming from the squeezing and some additional information, which I'm not explaining. But uh, from this additional information, of course we can identify, but I don't have time. You can get uh, the B mu function in front of the qubit function, and the new, from new one, you get uh, this factor. And uh, what one can also do is that uh, this, size of the empty size in the skew tableau, skew tableau can be written as a sum of two energies and uh, the modulus of cap and the By using this identity and this projection, then yeah, we could prove the identity. So yeah, first this gives us the kind of first bijective proof of the Cauchy identity of the Q-Hotical polynomials. And uh, again, by conditioning on the length of, length of the first row, then this gives you this uh, formula we wanted to prove. And then, yeah, so this, yeah, with this now we can, we could prove this identity. Then we could connect the KPZ model, theoretical measure, theoretical measure, and then the determinant of point yeah. so This is the main message, but uh, yeah, for the proof you have to 
do a little more using crystal theory, but uh, this I cannot explain today. And uh, so this provides us some kind of new way to study KPG models. So, so traditional way to study Q, you know, KPG models, which are deformed, like ASAP, QTSF, was to use either Markov theory, Bayesian that's McDonald's operator, matching. Now, there are some calculation involved, but uh, our mapping is also non-trivial. I agree, but uh, at least uh, conceptually, once we do this mapping to this uh, uh, function, then we can just play with the determinant point process. This is uh, and uh, one advantage of using this is to, that we can also study a symmetrized version as in the talk of uh, Alessandra this morning for the case of Q, with Q. <laughs> and in this case, we consider some measure in terms of just a single q measure. And then the formulas become a bit messier, but one, there's a kind of parallel story, like for the same, uh, both infinite case. In this case, we use the free band issue. There's an identity even with some conditioning, and then we can study our space model, low gamma, KPZ, and even ASF. This is not our work by Jimmy, I think he's here. But anyway, so in this way, yeah, we, we can study KPZ models in a, yeah, in a kind of novel way. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, one thing I want to do, of course, I want to talk about this one. But, uh, in my talk, I was what we call the vertical free tableau. So we can consider several variants. That one is to, to consider a horizontal weak tableau. This is related to the column insertion of the RSK. And then, then this is related to modified horizontal route. And uh, in this case, the kind of standard box and ball system appear. And then the linearization, which we use for, for proving the bijection, becomes the well known uh, to some people, the KKR bijection. For the box and whole system. So now we, we feel that we have a better understanding between our sphere of dynamics, the standard theory of box and whole system. But uh, this maybe I can explain more for the next chance. All right. Then, yeah, this is it. So I have explained kind of the correct way to connect KPD models to free theory of the finite temperature. And uh, so this was achieved by our uh, sphere state dynamics, and uh, this gives you kind of more direct way to study KPC, even though the mapping is a bit highly not trivial. And uh, there's also symmetry, symmetric version, and we can also study half space model. And uh, I, I hope that there are more <laughs> developments from here. Thank you for your attention. Uh, are there any questions? So in the box ball system, you have solitons. Yeah. How do they appear in your formulation? Solitons are more or less here. So they so they have definite speed, right? Well, if you apply the RSK dynamics, then this column, uh, this part of the column propagates with speed three, and this part corresponds uh, propagates with speed two and so on. And the one can also describe the scattering, you know, you know, phase shift and so on. So they are very, very similar to Boxham Ball. But uh, the real connection was not clear for this case, but uh, by considering this horizontal weak tableau, there's a real connection to the usual Boxham Ball. Uh, any other questions? Oh, Look quickly out in the front and take a picture of the golfer team.